Welcome to Friends and Neighbors. We're having a good day here, yes, on Sandra. Uh, I'm Sherry Tatum, one of your co-hosts, along with my beautiful, sweet, darling, precious Sandra O'Neill, whom I love. I love you too. Yes, <laughs> and uh, you know what, I, I, Sandra, I say all the time, we have such good guests, and I learn so much myself, and today is no exception. Michael Letts is here with us, and he was a firefighter, he was a policeman and a chaplain, and he was at Ground Zero, but he also is the founder and president of Invest USA, which provides vests for our police officers. Am I, did I get that Got right? That exactly uh, right. Uh, Michael, how did you start Invest and why? Well, I've also served in public office. I was on council in Columbia, and I was president of a Kiwanis club. One of the great things about being the president of a Kiwanis Club is when a speaker doesn't show up, since you're the president, <laughs> you get it. You get it, yeah. <laughs> so I had a speaker that canceled about, you know, uh, midnight the night before, and I called the sheriff and asked him to send one of his deputies just to talk about why he wanted to be in law enforcement, and the academy, et cetera. And in the question and answer session, someone asked him wherever that protective vest was that he was supposed to wear, and he said, well, he couldn't afford one. The department didn't provide him. I thought that was odd, so I sent him over to the Rotary Club. Gave the same speech, <laughs> had somebody in the audience ask the same question, he gave the same answer. Well. <laughs> so I thought that at the time that we could get that solved by uh, getting counsel to provide the necessary funding. It was $250,000 that was needed. To wow, provide. We had 220 deputies. It was a lot of officers, mm -hmm. about 1,000 apiece. And uh, I was not there for third reading. I happened to be out of town, and when I got back, I had all these reporters swamp me and say, what do you think about them removing your $250,000 on third reading? Well, I did something that politicians should never do, but I spoke without thinking. What they do all the time anyway. And I said, well, fine, if they feel that way about it, we'll just go to the public and raise it. Hmm. You know, I've not been able to find an exit strategy ever since then, and that was 30 years ago. <laughs> Paid for those words dearly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But you say that you get help from public relations, sponsorships, fundraisings, and all these educational programs. Does that help? It does. I'll tell you what's the most meaningful in the whole thing is while we have some corporate sponsors across the country, et cetera, the vast majority of our funding comes from mom and pops across mm -hmm. the country oh. they say look you know we know what y'all go through if this will help please put a vest on an officer yes and we've had 3200 officers that have been saved wow how many uh, 3200 over the last 30 years God. so it's well worth the endeavor yes uh, in fact we were just down on the border in texas we're headed back because of course of the border crisis yes you know they're being shot at across the river it's amazing. and uh, It really is. They don't have the necessary equipment. I tell folks that they truly are America's heroes. Mm -hmm. And for the way they've been treated the last 15 years, it's just heartbreaking. I don't understand it. Have we know. forgotten? Yes. Have we, we forgotten? We have yes. forgotten. I, I think it's beyond forgetting. I think there has been a definite movement on the left right. to try to re destroy the remaining freedoms that we have in this country. Absolutely. And I don't think they can do that without eliminating first responders in the military first. Yes. And so there's been a concerted effort for 15 years. To do years. that, yes. And they started back in about 15 years ago by first of all trying to say that law enforcement were racist, were bad people, which they kind of backfired on them when their own uh, black officers wouldn't go along with it. I said, no, you know, my brothers are not like that at all. So they labeled us all as racist. Oh. And then uh, when that didn't work too well, then they made a, an effort to make sure we didn't have the necessary equipment, which is why Invest got started, to make sure we didn't have the protective equipment to come home safely to our families. 
then that didn't work. So they've uh, gone to the process now of trying to defund God. police. Yes. You know, Ben and Jerry just came out with a ice cream failure, all the money to go towards the defund the police movement. I'm just shocked. I am shocked yeah, at that. They have a flavor called Change is Coming, and I'm telling them, we responded, we're doing, going across the country now, telling them, well, you can keep your change, because, you know, I mean, yeah. if that's what it means is to destroy I'd first like responders. I'd like to see what would happen if someone broke into their company. I agree. You know, just stole their profits or hurt their people. What do you do? They're always the first to call oh. when they need something. Yes, absolutely. And then the first to criticize to try to destroy us, and that's just amazing. But what, what, what about this, Michael? The, the, the firemen, the police were there at ground zero. They're the ones that got in there, did the work, lost their lives. And have we just forgotten or is it the, just this another generation that doesn't understand it, doesn't know about it enough? I think we have allowed others to characterize yeah. what's been going on. And that's been a shame because those who saw can't ever forget mm -hmm. the image of our first responders running in, knowing good and well they weren't coming out. Yeah. And, you know, the call went out to evacuate, and they still stood their ground and said, okay, but one more. Let me get one more. Let me get one more out. And, of course, it cost them their lives in doing that. We lost 343. Uh, and you were called as a, was it a chaplain at that point mm -hmm. to go to Ground Zero. R take us back to that moment when you were sure. there. When, well, were, when were you sent there to Ground the Zero? The way it transpired was that happened on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. you know, Tuesday morning. Of course, I was headed to, we had a council meeting that morning when I got there. And of course, I had the briefing. I knew good and well. I think anyone who has the training knows that uh, emergency and a threat of that magnitude, mm -hmm. no way one particular agency could ever handle that. It's, it's overwhelming. Right. And so it has been a tradition in this country, the American spirit, when we're down, we unite and we get behind each other and we decide together. We did it December 7th in 1941. You remember when we were That's bombing That's what I Japanese, thought about. You know, boom. Yes. As an amazing Earl country, Harbor. we rallied and what do we need to do to solve the problem? Mm -hmm. So I knew that as I was seeing those images that they were gonna need help. So I began to make calls on our own. What do we need to do to mobilize? We got the call the next day from the FBI asking if we would mobilize and come up. But we had already engaged, already gotten ourselves together, prepared to do that. One little glitch in the whole situation, there was no air transportation. That's right. So yeah. you had to uh, get in the cars and drive. That's right. And that's what we did. And we got there probably on a Thursday evening, I believe it was, late that evening. I've had a lot of uh, hosts ask me, what was your first impression? But there was major disaster. Everything was oh. just, how do no. you take it? It was overwhelming. I tell people, to, be. To, to, to listeners and to viewers that are trying to be able to absorb it all, I say, imagine yourself, of course, this is from my firefighting experience. I say, imagine yourself going on to a house structure, a house fire, when it's over, you've got a pile of debris in front of you, maybe a foot, two foot high from what's left. I said, imagine going on to a situation and it is three, four, five, six, seven stories high mm. of debris mm. and just it's covering blocks, city blocks. The magnitude was just overwhelming. Well, did, did, were you, you saw the cross, sure the metal did. cross. Did sure that did. just inspire you to some degree? It inspired me and I will tell you when we got to the situation, of course, I was in a unique situation having training in, in, in various areas. We knew very quickly that really law enforcement was not necessary because contrary to a lot of situations, people weren't coming in to loot. People were trying to get as far away from that situation as they could. Right. But then, so we realized that there wasn't going to need a, yeah, a whole lot of need for law enforcement. But you saw all the guys, law enforcement officers, firefighters, that had been there for 48 hours before we got there, trying to listen, trying to dig, trying to see if they could save some of their brothers and sisters. Yes. Uh, it was heartbreaking because they were beyond the point of exhaustion. So we quickly decided the best thing we could do would be search and rescue and then provide the chaplaincy services well, for grief and counseling. But since you were a firefighter, a policeman, and a chaplain, how did, 
were you used and what capacity were you used? And if you were used as a, a chaplain, did so many people come up to you and say, do you, have you seen my... You, you had Ooh. two different scenarios. See, my brother. You know, it, it, it still is emotional for me. You, you, yeah. you, you had two different scenarios that happened. We assessed the situation and we decided we would go in with search and rescue to begin with and help to see if we could find any survivors. Now, here's what was, what was amazing that I want to uh, draw on the issue that you raised is what could we do? Well, they knew that I was a chaplain. So it was amazing as to how many during the process they would call, come over here, come over here. We thought we heard something. Can we all gather? Can you pray for mm. us or pray for the victim that we're trying to find? So you are constantly moving around in what I call prayer circles, yeah. you know, re, uh, uh, rescue workers that were stopping to say, can you pray for us? And of course I knew what that meant. You need twofold. We're praying for our country. Yes. We're praying for the victims because they're at, that, at that stage there still was a possibility. Remember, we rescued up to four or five days later. Right. We pulled people out. So you're praying for any perhaps that are trapped in air pockets. And you're praying for those first responders and their families because they're, they're operating on beyond fumes. Right. And they're just sheer, not one of you telling them, hey, you need to go take a break. No. I, if, if it were the roles were reversed, they wouldn't be taking a break to try to find me. I'm not going to do that for them. So you had that one element when you're talking about the first responders of helping them, praying with them on the scenes. Then you go back to the command centers. Well, at the command centers, that's where you had the families that are waiting. And that's when you get into, and, and one of the things that you'll never forget is when you have the children, Ooh, you know, yeah. daycare, yeah, the, the kids, because a lot of them didn't have the ability to leave. I mean, it was happens so quick. They they had to bring them with them, and so you have these kids tugging on you. Have you seen my daddy? Have you seen my mama? And you have to get down on one knee because you need to be on their level, and you say, I promise you, we're going to keep looking. Now let me tell you why we are looking that your mama or your daddy may have died, but they are heroes mm. and they died doing what they loved. Mm. And that's helping people. And I hope one day, one day you'll have that same character that they do. Mm. But don't worry, we're gonna to continue to look until every hope is gone. Because you don't wanna be dishonest. Mm. You don't wanna say, oh sure, you know, we'll have them back to you in an hour, no good and well. Right. The possibility of survivors is very minimal. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, you want them to recognize that their parents, their father, their mother, were truly our America's heroes. And it ties back into the situation you raised. That was such an emotional turning point for this country. We were united. So what happened Right. 20 years from now? Mm -hmm. And that's why I fully believe that it has not just been the American public. I believe it's been a concerted effort. effort to try to, and the underlying cause is we want to take away the remaining freedoms that we in this country enjoy. Because you know, we are the last bastion of hope yeah. in the world. Right. America is it. We're the last I've slide lived in on the hill. Yeah. Yes, I've lived in countries all across the world. Yeah. There's no place like America. Amen. And so they have made a concerted effort. They have helped this new generation to forget by not reminding us, eh? but of course, we bear some responsibility too because we have not done what we could, should be doing to remind folks right. of America's true heroes. But the second thing is, is they have attempted to make sure that first responders are despised, that nobody wants to take up the role. You know, it's, what's tragic is that, and the federal statistics from the Department of Justice show this, Within three to five years, it's closer to three than it is five. There won't be anybody to answer your 911 calls. When you dial 911, within the next few years, you're going to get a recording. Now, if it's to, to, to get a firefighter to come get your cat out of the tree, that may be able to wait. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's busting down your door to try to rob or hurt your family, that's a horrible response to get. Hey, but that's where we're headed in this country. And we're headed because of the fact that they have been vilified. We have created a situation and policies where now, 
quite frankly, first responders are often considered guilty before they're innocent. They're, as soon yeah. as something happens, why did you do that? They don't even take all the facts. Mm -hmm. They don't consider putting themselves in that situation. How would you react in a split Absolutely. second? Absolutely. And they've just made it to the point we don't pay them very much. You, I think America knows that, you know, it's the highest stress job yes. in the world. We have the highest divorce rates, mm -hmm. but yet it pays the least. And we appreciate it less. So what I ask people to do is we created this charity, Invest USA. We provide body armor, but we do more than that. I tell them, go to our website, investusa.org. Now, it's a charity, so it's .org, investusa.org. And you'll see a whole list of things that we're asking the country to do because the thin blue and red line are collapsing. Yes. And they cannot fix themselves anymore. It's beyond that. that yeah. The only way to fix this situation is that we, the American people, must rally behind America's heroes Amen. and say, hey, we're covering your back the same way you're doing ours. I believe we'll, we will unite again as a country behind our first responders. It will send such a clear message to the criminal element It'll send a clear message to our young people about the values that we respect in this country, that it will change America and it will save what we have when you and I, I grow I think up. for the longest time, there's been a generation that has taken for granted right. what the hand of God and the blessing of God yeah. on our communities through the American heroes, yes. through our police force and, and and what has been set up. It's just, it's something you just expect. Yeah. And when you do that, you don't take care of it and you don't um, honor it the way it needs to be honored. So my prayer as a new, um, that the new generation, uh, families of young children, I have a nine year old, will start being faithful, remembering back, like it says in the Bible, yeah. you look back at the faithfulness of God through the Israelites. If you don't go back and retell your, your story of God's faithfulness, you will start drifting away from God's hand of blessing. So I, that is my prayer for America, that uh, we as a family, it starts with the family, it goes out into the community, and then it continues to, right. to, to expand. Well, I think we've lost so much faith in God, too, uh, and we have this false sense of security. They, they've invented this, but Michael, if that happens in three to five years, it's going to create such chaos. It's going to get even worse before then because you saw the debacle in Afghanistan. Yes, and, oh my I mean, God, yes. Never before in the history of this country have we ever left Americans behind. Yes. And you know, we have allowed a base now to be developed to export terrorism. We have a porous border. I told you that's why we're headed back to the border to help provide additional vests and security for those that are needed. Right now, it's easy for terrorists to get in and out. And they have determined to take America down. Absolutely. So, I don't, and the, the younger crowd, the younger generations, the 20 year olds, the uh, 30 years old, they don't understand. No, they don't. They don't understand what's coming and how bad it can be. Unless they've been there, they don't understand. Yeah, you do You do not understand. But I believe that there is but a faithful God I with a remnant. a remnant. Of, yes, a remnant yes. that will pull us through. Yes. And I pray and I thank for, I thank God for people like you yes, that can, can bring it to light, mm -hmm. that can start Keep this grassroots forefront. effort. Exactly, put yeah. it in the forefront I so that we can move forward. I think that's what we have to forward. do. It has to stay in the forefront. Yes. Right? Because, you know, uh, we are, God made us all Yes. Uh, uniquely, but yes. also God made us as humans. Whatever is important and stays in front is what we remember and we quickly forget. Yes. And so we have to, just like key elements that you mentioned, we have to continually remind our children yes. of where we've come from in our past. Scripture yeah. is very clear about that in the Old Testament especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that we have forgotten as a mm -hmm. country and as a people. Mm -hmm. But I think if we will unite together, and I tell people here's your easiest fashion because 
most people in America, thank God, still value and respect our first responders. I praise God for that. There is an element that's trying to characterize them otherwise, but the vast majority of Americans don't believe that. They yeah. do believe yeah. in the respect of America's first responders. Well, well Michael, we've got to, to uh, go. We've got to take a break. How can anyone get in touch with you real quick? They go to our website, investusa.org. They'll have a whole list of things that they can do, and I'm honored to be able to be here with you, ladies. Thank today. you. Likewise, thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. We'll be right back. Thank you. Stay Bye. with us. Stay. Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. I am Sandra O'Neill, and we just finished having a conversation with Michael Letts, who is investing back into our communities through the police forces, as well as uh, trying to have that moment of remembering um, God's hand of blessing within our community. He, he served as a chaplain in 9-11. And um, as we talked about it, I was really reflecting on the importance uh, for our families to be able to focus on God's faithfulness. It doesn't end. It starts with our families, and then it overflows into our communities. Let's never forget God's hand of blessing. He is faithful. And if we are able to share these heroes stories to our children, they will also encourage them and they will also be able to honor them and not forget that we are a blessed country here in America. But right now we are going to close the program with a special song from Marty Getz, We Will Never Forget. Twenty years ago Twenty years ago Planes of terror brought down our gleaming towers Twenty years ago People covered in dust and ash City smothered in smoke Twenty years ago And to this day We know We will never forget We will always remember Just where we were When it all changed forever we will never forget that day in September, watching in fear through those desperate hours, that beautiful morning, moments before. Many would pay 
the ultimate price. What can we say of such sacrifice? We can never forget. We will never forget. The dust has cleared. The dawn has broken. Raging fire's gone at last. From the ash, hope has risen. Clothed with steel and glass, a symbol for our children of liberty and strength. is dear we must cherish it ever so we have come to this solemn day our hearts as one we gather to say we will never forget we can never forget 20 years now Never.